Well, I use the floor as a pallet sometimes, mm -hmm. and sometimes it just gets uh, accidentally uh, splashed <laughs> in the process of uh, what I'm doing, and um, it's, it's, it's a work of art itself. You know? It, it is, it, certainly. It, it's, it's changing all the time. Yeah, this one here, um, um, I want to talk about it because it's, uh, there's things about how I work as an artist uh, involved with this, trying to get some sort of spiritual quality uh, that we all know exists. Um, it's been referred to as the noumenon in different ways, and here I'm trying to find uh, the secret uh, energy that Caspar David Friedrich had in his work. And so this I call looking for Caspar David Friedrich. And I've invented this shape here, this mysterious shape, uh, in my search to uh, find that. And the shape reoccurs in other paintings as well, so it's not something unusual for me. Uh, it might be for the rest of the world, but uh, for me, um, I love to use certain things that seem to work for me in my symbolism. And you can see that now that we've had a, uh, a crisis in the world where everybody gets locked down. And so what have I done uh, in my lockdown period is um, I've started making sculpture which um, is influenced by the world around me and the paintings that I've done already and the, the symbols and shapes and forms that I've um, used before. Um, I'm known for a lot of colour in my work, but also calligraphy and searching for messages uh, using the line. The tree out the front has branches going off into the sky, and I think of that as the line takes a walk into the sky. Um, up until now, I've been taking a line for a walk across a page uh, or a canvas. As you can see there, this is a line taking a walk in two dimensions. Now, in front of the painting, is the line takes a walk in three dimensions. And here's that uh, strange shape that I was talking about in the Caspar David Friedrich painting um, with the three legs and the little head. There's no body, there's a wing, only one. Um, distortion is a key word. Um, response uh, is another word. And I guess that's what all these things are in some way. They're a response. Uh, when I look back to the uh, early 70s when I started, a lot of the ideas I had then were similar to the ideas that I have now. I started with a, a man called uh, Tom Gleghorn, who just had a show up in Newcastle uh, in Australia this time, and uh, he was a major influence on me about colour and freedom and, and, and about landscape, and uh, that's what got me started. There's, there's a painting here that has got, got a, I think, a lot of uh, Tom's influence in it. I don't know if you can see it uh, over there. Um, it's about uh, freedom, right? And, and not just um, coming up with an idea and going with the idea, but just getting started and then developing mm. the, the, the developing the idea as you go. Yeah, that's, that's the most important thing, mm. and let things uh, evolve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. You, you start off with chaos, and out of the chaos comes something new. And so you don't really, I don't think you can come up with something new unless you've gone through this chaotic process mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and um, and out of that chaos comes you know something that you couldn't get unless you'd gone into chaos mm -hmm. yeah so that's how I teach you know um, I, I do get people coming along to my classes <laughs> to, to learn nothing uh, but uh, about going into chaos and then finding a way of coming out of it Yeah, I think I should be a girl. And, um, well,